Hey, my name is Attorney Walter Wolfnoff the Third. I'm with Disability Resolution PA. We're going to be talking very briefly about the Commissioner Andrew Saul termination. And I personally do not know legally if there will be a giant battle. I'm sure there will be. Because traditionally, now keep in mind, historically, these commissioners were actually brought on for a four-year term. And the idea, uh, I got to tell you something. I didn't know this stuff. Before he was terminated, I was having a conversation with uh, an administrative law judge that had retired. And literally, after that conversation, after we hung up, and, and this is one of my, like, you know, I have disability dads. Like, I, I have some disability dads that are older attorneys that have guided me. This is one of my disability, like, grandpas, you know? Um, and kind of the amazing thing about this is that uh, we were talking about this and going through this, and he was explaining to me, you know, how things work. You know, when you have experience like this gentleman has, everything is in the scale of right now, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. It's, he, can see, he can see their side, our side. He can see all it. He's just, you know, because he used to own his own law firm before he became an administrative law judge. So my point to you is this. We were talking about this, and then hours, not even hours, an hour after we hung up the phone, this comes out. And we were uh, talking specifically about this particular individual. Uh, I'm going to just tell you a little historic history thing. And, and literally, I had a conversation with him over the phone. And, and what I did was I made all these sticky notes. Because, you know, when you're talking with somebody that incredible, that intelligent and capable, you literally shut up and you listen and you take notes as to what they're saying. Because that, that is like insight and experience at the highest level. So um, we were talking about this situation, and he was explaining to me the history of what happens with commissioners, and I didn't know. I just did. I haven't studied that. That wasn't a thing that I knew about. And, you know, there's lots of things I don't know about with this stuff historically because I didn't live in that era, and I, there's not many history books on it. You know, you, some of the stuff you have to Wikipedia. So kind of the bottom line is explaining, you know, in the very beginning, commissioners had four-year terms. And historically, what's really neat about that is that they would line up a bit with that president. You know, that president would come in for your term. That would happen, yada, yada. But then they wanted the, the agency to have a more independent approach. So what they did was they gave the commissioner six years. But the problem with that is that the commissioner, while being more independent away from what the president wanted, because, you know, they were there into the next presidency, um, would be basically at odds with the president and the things that the president wanted. And as a result of that, uh, what happened was uh, we are now seeing basically the exact reasoning of why this six years idea, in theory, was a good idea. It creates a more independent organization, less politics, if you will. But what it also creates is this great you know, who has the power fight? Who's going to be right? Fight, right? So I'm going to read from you uh, a quote real quick. Um, Commissioner Sauls stated, I consider myself the term protected commissioner of Social Security. Uh, the White House recited a list of grievances against him. Here they are. Since taking office, Commissioner Saul has undermined and politicized Social Security disability benefits, terminated the agency's telework policy, now, there's more to that telework policy where they basically get to work from home. There were issues with employees working from home. Um, but let's keep going. Um, that was utilized by up to 25% of the agency's workforce. Uh, not repaired SSA's relationships with relevant federal employee unions, including in the context of COVID-19 workplace safety planning. Reduced due process protections for benefits, uh, benefits appeals hearings. That's a big one. That's one I've personally been complaining about and bitching about for a significant amount of time. Let me read it again. Reduced due process protections for benefits uh, appeals hearings and taken other actions that run contrary to the mission of the agency and the president's policy agenda. All right. So remember when you guys um, were like, hey, when is President Biden going to do this stuff? When is he going to do the Supplemental Security Income Restoration Act? When is he going to do the Social Security uh, you know, Administration's 2100 Act? When is he going to do it? When is he going to make steps towards it? I didn't know. Nobody still does. Nobody knows. You know all these other videos out there that are like, flashy, money's coming your way next month. 
Here we go. Biden did it. Wow. Um, this is amazing. All those videos have no idea, A, when the acts will pass the Senate or the House. B, when the president will sign it. C, when there will actually be money done or in your account. And then through all of this, through all of this, none of us can tell you if those acts will be sucked into a much larger act and then passed. So the, the thing that I'd like to kind of present to you right now, the thing that I think you need to understand about this is that Commissioner Saul was a President Trump uh, appointee. And Commissioner Saul, he even stated in here that basically he's going to be showing up to work on Monday. Um, I, I just want to go ahead and go into the basics with this thing. Um, I, I personally was surprised when certain things would come out. Uh, I was even surprised when some of them, when Biden got in and some of them came out and they had been working on them for two years. And I was like, oh, I don't think they'll put them in. And then they did put them in. And I think that um, what we need to realize is that this is the first major stamp of approval or bootmark that Biden is making under the Social Security Administration. A lot of us believe, and I was starting to believe, that Biden was too busy working on other things. And this is a clear, definitive, factual sign that he is eyeing changes to Social Security benefits. So I want you to understand, um, some of you guys were like, why are you making videos about the Social Security, Supplemental Security Income Restoration Act? You know, it's never going to pass. It's never going to pass. You don't know that. You don't know that because most of the things that are in that act were specific bullet points that Biden talked about and promoted prior to becoming president. First one to do that ever and then become president. You don't know that because now we see him trying to change the players on the game. The big, the big players. If we look at the chessboard, the kings, the queens, the rooks, the castles, the bishops, these players are now changing. So what this kind of means is that um, there will be a massive, massive legal battle, okay, over who has essentially the power. Yes, he was put in on a bipartisan group. Yes, he was appointee under Trump. Yes, there will be a massive legal battle. Who knows if he's actually going to be terminated at the end of it? I don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. There will be some professor of law from Harvard who will give us a uh, resuscitation on, uh, um, sorry, that was wrong, but they'll give us some sort of, you know, ideological review of the law, a theoretical review of the law, a public policy review of the law, and they'll give us their opinion ultimately as to how this will come out. And that's fine. Now, with that said, um, we need to realize that whether or not Andrew Saul as the commissioner of the Social Security Administration we need to realize that as an individual, um, he represents some things that I disagree with. Um, I know I did that letter that he put out, I did, which was kind of like a quasi-apology letter. I did that video on that, which explained essentially, you know, what he was doing. And what he was doing was he was power playing the IRS to make sure they paid the Social Security Administration more money so that uh, the employees, etc., would be paid to do this extra thing beyond what they're traditionally, uh, you know, warranted to do. It's a Trump move. With that said, um, I, I think what's incredibly important here is that there, it's a six-year term, but realistically, each president, they're going to want their own team. And you have to keep in mind something, too. The Social Security Administration was an independent organization, and then it, it and and this is one of the things that uh, the, the 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 gentleman I was talking with today was sharing with me the historical relevance. It wasn't always a, a a privatized independent organization. Well, not privatized, but specific to its own little entity. At a point, it was part of HHS, which wasn't called HHS back then, which is Health and Human Services now. But back then, it wasn't called that. They they joined it with that, and then. The Social Security Administration had to report to that group. But then the Social Security Administration got separated again and became an independent agency where it would just obviously report, you know, more directly to the highest officials as opposed to having to go through another agency. 
So my point to you is this, this battle that will occur will be a balancing situation of the independence of the Social Security Administration from the current White House versus a president being able to pick uh, the players that are on the chessboard while they are, uh, you know, within their presidency. So I, I just wanted to go through that real quick. I hope that that helped you consider these things. Um, I think that some of the things that will happen going forward with the new commissioner will be obviously more linear with what President Biden explained uh, as part of his plan prior to becoming president, which is literally outlined in the Social Security uh, 2100 Act and the Social Supplemental Security Income uh, Restoration Act. I'm going to be going through those other options as I have more time. Another thing I just want to point out, guys, when you guys are like, give us information right now. We need to know about this. What's going on with this? You didn't tell us about this. This YouTube channel is not my real job. It's not. It's a thing I do to help you guys. Um, it gives me a little bit extra cash through the advertisements and stuff like that. So the bottom line here is, I just want you to understand this, but this is not my job. My job is an attorney who goes to hearings and does, you know, incoming claimants, writing briefs, running hearing questions. That's my real job. This whole YouTube thing is it's like a little side thing, you know? And I just want you to understand that I, I try to give you the most quick, relevant, up-to-date information. But as you can tell, I am tired. So, um, things are going to get very spicy with the Social Security Administration and the White House. I'm going to try to give you up-to-date information. It's almost always going to be a day after it happens. It's not going to be like these other guys where they're just sitting there going, Guess what, guys? Guess what just came out? Wow! Wouldn't that be great? Wow! That kind of stuff... I I'm not going to do that. You know I don't do that. I've never done that. I'm not part of that. Just let's do analytical thinking. Let's figure out what the future of this thing is going to be. Let's plan so that hopefully the retired, the disabled, OX benefits, DAC benefits, etc., SSI benefits, hopefully those individuals will have a better shot at investing into their future with this knowledge. I'm giving it to you. I, I give it freely to you. And the reason I give it freely to you is because I would like to see the class of individuals who are struggling in America to have a better shot at happiness. Um, maybe that's impossible. Maybe it's not. I don't know. It looks like it's impossible some days. I will tell you that. But either way, uh, hopefully we'll get to a better place. My name is Attorney Walter Ruffnot the third. I'm with Disability Resolution PA. Have an absolutely wonderful day. If you like this uh, video or the channel, like, subscribe. Please leave five-star reviews. They help me compete against other firms. Um, if uh, basically you want the most up-to-date information, that's fine. Give me a call. But give me a call about this stuff, not 9 to 5. I'm working uh, from 8 to 10 every Thursday p.m. Eastern Standard Time because I'll be live on YouTube. Have an absolutely wonderful day. I'll catch you a little bit later, and we'll go from there. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.